Um, so with, uh, with a few words to tell you about the chronic condition, uh, colleagues, you can all see yourselves uh, on the screen. Uh, actually, you can zoom in a bit if you need to see it closer with bigger letters, but you can see yourself on the screen. Uh, you can see the resources that are allocated to you. If you hover by your mouse or click on them, it will show you, you know, um, what are the resources, the number of resources you have. And in the middle of the screen, you see the chronic condition. Uh, and if you, again, go over your mouse or click on the name of the institution near the chronic condition, you will see what are the implications for this institution given the condition. So in our case, um, so in our case, in the case of Yerevan, we're playing in a fictive setting for Yerevan city. Uh, the chronic condition is the uh, increased level of air pollution in the city, which is now beyond the acceptable norm. The air quality index is in a very kind of bad shape. It's very high. It's unhealthy uh, for almost all groups, uh, especially impacting negatively the health of people in the vulnerable groups or with sensitive or chronic conditions. But it's uh, becoming uh, very um, dangerous to go out without any protective kind of masks or protective measures. So this is a chronic condition in the city. Um, just let's imagine it's year 2022. Uh, we still as a city or as a country haven't fully overcome the COVID condition either. So, you know, we're still recovering with the vaccines and other measures, but, you know, after all this kind of crisis, the post COVID-19 crisis, we now have this situation in the city. And for each of your players, this presents a different type of uh, kind of challenge. Um, and uh, like, for example, for Yerevan municipality, of course, increased pressure, pressure on the city authorities to introduce mitigation adaptation measures to possibly find out the reasons behind the contamination and address the needs and complaints of the citizens um, and so forth. Or uh, for the health ministry, again, increased burden on, on the number of patients increasing, people complaining with respiratory diseases even more, uh, you know, the need to inform the population what to do, uh, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So, without me further ado, you can go and you know see what what this exactly means for you. But you can also know this uh, by yourself. So, if no questions at this stage, and given the chronic condition in the city, I will start the game now, the first round. Um, and as you know, in the first round, you will all be ex uh, expected as participants, as players, to make a what if statement. Uh, a suggestion to address the situation as it relates to your institution, to your role. And then you also allocate resources for this uh, suggestion, for this what if. And also you may request resources from other players exactly again for your own suggestion. So once we make this move and we discuss this internally, we will proceed to the next stage. Um, let's go. And please be active on the chat as well. I. I want to hear your, you know, discussions, you know, what are your ideas, uh, how you feel about this, what are your suggestions, you can also address each other verbally as well. Okay, I see the telecom company. What if we address the coverage of internet network reaching even to the remotest villages? Okay, what do you think about this, colleagues? What are your suggestions to address the situation? Where do you see this? Tatev, sorry, I think yeah, I, I can't see I'm, I'm seeing, I can't um, see I'm seeing this because uh, Nelly has shared the screen, Hasmik Jan. It's just because that's the reason I can see it. But oh, other than okay. the it's so coming. it's not placed yet here. Yeah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So as the press, I'm now saying, come on, there is a crisis. What's the government yeah. thinking about? What's the city <laughs> thinking about? What, what are you going to do now? <laughs> yeah, press, please be very active. I mean, it's, yeah. it's and in the press and the and the civilian, Hasmik Jan, yeah. we look forward to your notes. Okay, colleagues, what, what are you up to? Just share, like, to talk to each other. <laughs> okay, so um, I, I'm now, as a regular um, citizen, I'm demanding government to care about me and just asking, will government distribute at least first aid or first, uh, I mean, products and um, of first, 
um, an Unterstützung für euch. Necessity. Necessity, ja. Yeah, okay, so who are you addressing? Are you addressing the emergency ministry or the municipality? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Guys, I just need physically to type first of all and then to answer orally. I cannot do the same. Do, do <laughs> the same, time. same here. That's fine. Fine. <laughs> I type in and then I answer officially. Breaking news, breaking news. The emergency, ministry of emergency is... Uh, Taking the first step, the, the saying that uh, awareness raising you know, is important as a first step to address the crisis. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, as the municipality can see, uh, I'm asking subsidies from the municipality to move forward with the suggestion to increase the internet coverage and also to raise awareness about the precautionary measures for the citizens. And as a user of telecom company, I will endorse it now, but make a comment that the rates should remain the same for users. Mm -hmm. So Hasmik, in the next stage, in the stage B, you can endorse or criticize the quotes. Let's wait for everyone to put down I, their suggestions. Oops, I, I, I did it. I mean, I tried to type and endorse already. I don't know whether it worked or not. Uh, no, I cannot see it. I, I sh it should be in the section in the round 1B. Now we are in the... Uh, ah, okay, I see, I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, dear colleague, okay. Yeah. Yes, you go first. Uh, you are the ministry, so please go ahead. <laughs> okay, uh, as an official, as I had been asked the question, what steps government is going to take? I have already said uh, what if statement uh, for uh, starting a monitoring system of all districts uh, with help of various sensors. I have set mobile capital uh, allocation of uh, mobile capital resources uh, for um, 10 points for 10 different, different zones of the city. Early warning systems information help with help of uh, UAVs and so on. So this is the first action from the Ministry of Emergency Situation. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, um, uh, uh, I really wanted to know what is the situation now, whether do you have uh, any updates on the number of casualties and then um, the situation to understand what is the real need to support with. And uh, of course, I would like as a DMT disaster management team member to uh, understand whether uh, there is a need to activate a uh, cluster system uh, or not. Over. So this is the question to, to the ministry and municipality as well. Um, in terms of the right now, the assessment of uh, monitoring, uh, I can say that uh, our, early, our early warning systems have already worked. So we have the information on only the level of pollution right now in the center of the city. And um, uh, two other districts of Yerevan. And uh, right now we are uh, planning to uh, ask the suggestion uh, as, the, as the support from the Ministry of Health to allocate already the medical institutions that we are going to work uh, with them um, in order to transport with our means um, certain population to evacuate them uh, the exactly uh, affected people to evacuate them in this uh, to, to this uh, health um, health uh, institutions of care institutions this is so far for the moment we don't have any numbers about the affected people this is not our domain this we need to to get from from the uh, center right now as soon as there is information i will update on that okay Thank you. Um, okay, thanks. So um, the, from the UNDMT, uh, there is no suggestion as such for now, right? I don't see a what if card from UNDMT. I'm trying to type, but I have some uh, issues. And from um, health ministry, uh, there is what if we prevent the infections through, and I cannot yeah. read the rest of the sentence. Um, it, it's half through. Uh, Tigranja, and your sentence, can you complete? I mean, you can you can edit your what if now, because it's, uh, or you can actually say it. You don't have to type it for it. 
Can you just come in okay. and say? Uh, yeah, I, I, I tried to change it, not to change it, but add, add another one, uh, another what if. Uh, oh. So when I see the role of the Ministry of Health is uh, first of all, to ensure the coordination of activities uh, between all the parties. Uh, and first of all, uh, start rehabilitation of uh, those persons uh, who are already infected. I mean, uh, providing the relevant treatment uh, for them. And I see Yerevan municipality has raised this issue as well. So of course, uh, we will provide uh, both the fixed assets uh, for that, uh, medical institutions and the medical staff um, uh, to, to, uh, to rehabilitate uh, or to treat all the persons who are infected already and uh, to start the um, uh, thinking about the prevention measures uh, but that's for the other phases, as, as far as I understand. Okay, right. So, colleagues, uh, Armenjan, if you are going to type something, we'll wait. Otherwise, we proceed to the next stage so we can start negotiating on the resources that we have requested from others. And we can, uh, you will see it on your left, uh, on the left side of your uh, screen. And you can either agree to it and give the resources or decrease or increase it. Uh, like for example, in the conversation, you have already mentioned that you know you agree to it or you you disagree to it. Um, yeah, so, I placed it actually. Okay, maybe I will see it in a few seconds. I don't see it yet. Yeah. Mm, and we see the press endorsing uh, the what if of the emergency ministry but they are criticizing the what if of the energy company saying that it should have been done earlier, the energy company. I, I actually have a question about the position that the press has taken on our statement, if that's okay. Yeah, sure, sure. You can type it on the bulletin board as well if it's a broad statement or you can say it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I have my general, I guess, uh, like vision in the, in the bulletin board. So I was just wondering whether uh, if, if I'm correct in seeing like um, a disparity in the in the press's treatment of the announcement from the Yerevan municipality and of the press's treatment of the announcement from the energy companies, because essentially we're saying the same thing uh, and uh, the the press is treating this differently. So I was just wondering if there's uh, there is an issue there. Um, yeah. Um. The press is a little bit biased here. Um, the press is considering what has been done before and who's making the decisions. And uh, uh, I think uh, different private companies and the government need to be prepared for any type of criticisms. It's the press job to criticize and uh, put forward you know, a dialogue and uh, showcase different types of arguments. So, um, this is what the public had expressed, and that's why the press is, uh, is writing about it. As a citizen, may I add, um, as a citizen, I sh should be a bit in um, panic and anxious, and uh, like I need instructions, how should I act? For instance, I want to endorse the emergency ministry's um, what if, but I also want to comment that apart from that, I need immediate instructions how should I act? I don't know whether should I criticize or endorse this <laughs> statement. Actually, actually, statement. Sorry, yeah. you can criticize or endorse, and also type a comment. It will show there. Yeah, I don't know. Just what the button to. Yeah. Okay. As a as a citizen uh, in panic, I would criticize, frankly. Yeah. Sorry, Thank colleagues, but yeah. uh, here you shouldn't criticize the Ministry of Emergency Situations, but the the municipality because. Uh, within the municipality territory, this is their role to deal with these issues. And also, as for the press, okay. uh, of course, the ministry or the municipality should manage all the things related to the press. Uh, uh, and the information that usually the press is trying to uh, distribute among the population should be checked with them, first of all, not to create panic, which is really very important. So it should be uh, organized in a well, well manageable way. And I would suggest to coordinate the efforts with the Ministry of Emergencies and uh, Ministry of actually uh, Health as well. Or maybe it would be much better if, uh, if the ministry start uh, establishment or the municipality start the establishment of the uh, task force where they can coordinate the efforts of all entities involved in the, pro in the process, in the response process. Over from my side. 
I have something to uh, comment on that also, but I was trying to remember one term. It is really very distracting to try and co co concentrate on the tasks that we want to do and the panic raising among the population. So for the, for the beginning, I want to say that the first action that ministry uh, realized, it is not, I mean, I'm not trying to uh, protect or to um, defend myself or not, not myself, but the Ministry of Emergency Situations, but just giving information. It is normal to have panic, of course, at the first stage. And of course, it is uh, obligatory and uh, really important from the ministry to react on this panic. Uh, dear uh, citizens, dear young parents, I want to assure you that the first thing that ministry uh, realized is that, if you remember all, uh, we started an awareness rising campaign in the city level. Mm -hmm. The awareness rising campaign comprises of several things. First of all, giving information on the actual crisis, what crisis we are facing right now and what challenges we have. And at the same time, sending uh, away information how to act in these situations. Of course, right now, the first step, the first um, demand to allocate the resources was a little bit differently organized, but uh, my... Um, through the press, I will do that right now to ask the population to avoid going to the streets, to mm -hmm. avoid um, uh, going to the center, as I have already announced in my um, uh, oral speech, uh, that we know already that in the city center and in two adjacent uh, districts, we have high level of pollution. And right now I am preparing a demand to UNDMT to, um, uh, to help with the assistance to, from uh, international organizations like activation of charters, of earth monitoring like um, uh, Copernicus and uh, space uh, monitoring. So I, I was just typing in right now. Take it as a um, guidance right now. You can spread it through the media, different channels and the uh, media and the uh, newspapers and the um, uh, press can also share, uh, spread it. Thank you very much for the attention. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Ministry of Emergency. And I also see that the telecom company has actually, uh, you know, put that they can support uh, the support in uh, distributing, raising awareness about the precautionary measures. So um, I think there can be good cooperation there. Uh, colleagues, do you, uh, so Minister of Emergency, are you putting a new, uh, I mean, you cannot put a new, you have one what if statement, but are you putting something yes, new yes, for yes. the UNDMT? Yes, yes, for UNDMT, I'm mean, right now, I'm typing it in, finishing. Uh, okay. I'm going to ask like municipality, are you refusing to give us subsidies uh, for increasing internet coverage or like uh, doing awareness raising for extra time advertisement of these precautionary measures, etc. So that was a question for the Yerman municipality, right? Yeah. Um, can you repeat the question? Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, the, I, I was asking if you look at this what if, uh, I'm asking for subsidies, uh, like asking for money to be able to move forward with our suggestion of increasing like internet coverage, um, reaching to the remotest villages, and also doing like uh, PR or I don't know, awareness raising campaigns concerning the precautionary measures while going out of homes uh, or etc. And I'm asking for uh, five uh, mobile capital from you. Uh, I think the municipality can give opportunity, can give infrastructure, uh, fixed capital for uh, enlarge your mobile uh, coverage, uh, but not a mobile capital, not a money, uh, not other resource because uh, Telecom company is private company, and the private company must uh, do itself, must invest itself. Uh, yes, so municipality well, can give fixed capital for it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, but uh, I should continue our argument, stating that we are putting our expertise and human resources into the action. And as this is the crisis, as a business, we haven't... Uh, 
like the resources to address it. That's why we're asking also for that because we should not only um, like have uh, some equipment for that, but we should also have uh, travel expenses, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to be able to reach there. Uh, that's why we also need some uh, amount of uh, subsidies. Yes, I understand. I want to say yes, but uh, resources is not <laughs> so much. So I I cannot tell yes. Okay. Okay. So, Thank colleagues, you. let's. let's uh, okay. One let's second. Yeah, sorry. Um, I, I was. I want to suggest we move forward to the stage B, where we actually. One because, second. One second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And two. Okay. Yeah. Wait. 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 Uh, and I. Okay. Type, yes. okay. I think it is there. Well, I'm ready. Okay. So it's round one B, which means we are still on the same, uh, you know, discussion of the what ifs. But this is the stage where you can actually all the players. You will see the resources on your left. The resources that uh, you are being requested when you go over. You click with the mouse on the different what like um, actors and their what ifs. You can see what are the resources requested from you, and you can actually, as you were already verbally saying, you know, try to uh, either further negotiate or already allocate or reject the resources you have been requested. Like with the Yerevan municipality, Sarkisjan, you have been requested some uh, financial resources by the telecom company, but you, as I understand, you are rejecting this much as you want to help. So you have to, you know, put it down to zero again, which means that you will not give any resources. Uh, may I comment oh, I, on something? Sure. If, if I tell you, we are ready to give a fixed capital. That's great. Yes, you can offer fixed capital instead. I mean, you uh, can, unless you know they don't want it. So you can discuss it maybe first. Uh, can Can I say something already on the requirements uh, of various uh, stakeholders? May I? Sure. We have uh, the Ministry of Emergency Situations um, received a request from telecom company to provide them with special cars and facilities to ensure safe uh, 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 evacuation of their staff uh, to the suggested locations. They have asked mobile capital five and uh, no human resources. Instead, uh, we cannot provide five requested mobile uh, cars as, as they requested. Three instead, uh, I will explain why. And we will also provide human resources three again. Uh, I mean, special specialists also to, um, to work with them uh, as far as telecom companies, really very uh, important partner right now. And we need to assure their, um, uh, their active involvement and their continuity of their business. So, but we cannot uh, allocate five uh, mobile resources because we need to uh, provide other stakeholders and the community people and the schools also. That that is why we are we have a certain shortage of uh, materials. Now I will go. Also, I have asked the uh, as I said UN uh, DMT. Uh, for support. I hope they will address it. And of course, we are ready to, and we have already allocated mobile capital of 10 and human resources 10 for organizing the monitoring. So far for, from me right now. Later, I will call, go on. Yeah, actually, yes, uh, uh, we decided. Armin, I cannot hear you. Uh, do you hear me now? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, actually, uh, upon your request, uh, based on your request, uh, I, I just want to, would like to inform you that we activated the cluster on communication. So uh, HCR in charge of that. So they are dealing with this uh, logistics and uh, communication issues. So they can support with this initiative and they can uh, bring actually the, the, the expertise and um, also some um, mobile uh, capital. Uh, mobile capital. Yeah, mobile mobile capital. Thank you very so much. So I, I I will I will keep. Uh, uh, should I type it here just for your information? You can you can just type on the resources, Armin. You cannot type a new okay. one. I I have it in the resources already. Okay. 
So colleagues, I suggest we move forward to the next round to make this more a bit more interactive. We took a bit Great. more time in the first round, so we give time for everyone to you know feel at ease with how this should work. But if uh, and and just you know, mind also very important the endorsements and the criticism by the by the civilians and the press. Um, you can see already uh, you know uh, many like dots. The as you know the red dots are the criticism and the. Uh, the green dots are the endorsement. So you can click on them and see what people think. For example, UNDMT, you are criticized by the press for uh, not doing enough. Uh, maybe you can address it in the second round. Um, and, you know, and, 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 and similarly, you can see all others from your, um, from your end. Okay, so colleagues, we're moving forward, which means that, as you will see now, your what if statements have changed color, so they are not editable anymore. And we have entered the second round. In the second round, we are in the same scenario. Nothing has changed. We're in the same city with the same chronic condition. And now each player, each institution is requested to place a what if card, a suggestion in relation to another uh, stakeholder, another player. Um, so you, for example, the, the uh, again, like we have done slightly, you know, discussed this already in the beginning, but for example, um, the telecom company can make an address to the health ministry. And one thing which actually, you know, came to my mind as observing the game is that interestingly, I don't hear a conversation about, you know, trying to find the purpose of this air pollution. You know, what is the reason that the levels have increased so much? And actually, we're all talking about adaptation, but I don't hear a conversation about mitigation. So that's an observation from, from a side. Maybe you can try to think that way as well. Over to you. You have nine minutes. <laughs> um, one thing uh, among all of the actors right now, we don't. I don't see the party which co which can cause which can have caused the uh, pollution. But for the moment, Yerevan municipality. So I will be requesting the Yerevan municipality for stopping the public transportation. I know this is cruel, but uh, we have observed and our sensors have shown that the buses that we have received from uh, various countries or of the second use, I'm sorry for my criticism, but they are making some certain uh, level of pollution. So I will, I will ask to stop them for a while and to allocate uh, resources for checking of the transportation and also checking of the, um, of the uh, active chemical or other uh, companies that uh, businesses that are uh, acting in the city to stop uh, temporarily their, uh, their activity. This is my request and I will place it. Thank you, great. Yerevan Municipality, any immediate reaction? Uh, agree. Mm -hmm. agree. We are going to stop the transportation. Oh my God. I think and as a citizen, I would criticize this a lot. <laughs> yes, we know, we, but this is in a, a good for the citizens. This is only for public transportation to check them. For how long? There should be announcement that, for instance, I don't know, for a week, we wouldn't be able to get somewhere. Uh, dear citizens, uh, before before we allocate this, uh, of course, this is a normal discussion, and uh, this kind of discussions appeared during the pandemic uh, moment when the cities were uh, the citizens were uh, demanded, requested, and uh, maybe also enforced to stay uh, stay indoors, uh, to stay home. Uh, so we will apply this uh, method of uh, asking the citizens to try staying home for their own sake. And this is a good peer, good time to, to do the checking and stop the public transportations while the people are at home. So we have uh, at least for, from uh, 48 to 36 hours to do this temporarily stop and quick checking. This is uh, the suggestion. Uh, the, uh, the most optimal suggestion that we can ask uh, or we can suggest from uh, as a Ministry of Emergency Situations. The press is stepping in here uh, asking what um, the, the end result of this stop of public transportation would be uh, if a number of vehicles are actually not suitable to be on the streets of Yerevan uh, what will they what will they be replaced by and how will you how will the Ministry of Emergency 
mm -hmm. respond, uh, address this immediately. This could result in a new dual crisis with not just air pollution impacting people's lives, but also an, an economic crisis where people cannot go to and from their jobs. Uh, answering your question, dear press, thank you for a very important question. Uh, I have already mentioned in my speech, and it will be in my what if statement, if I have one minute to write, uh, that the stop, total stop of public, only public transportation, I mean the microbuses and the buses, uh, to stop for 36 hours maximum to pass a check. And once they are suitable uh, and uh, human resources will be requested uh, to, uh, to work in this, to, to do the quick, quick checking. And once they are suitable for, uh, for the work, they will return to their routine. Uh, otherwise they will be removed uh, despite of the um, inconveniences the citizens may uh, face, we understand that, but this, uh, the human health and human lives are um, always uh, a priority, the prime priority for everyone. So if it is necessary to stop them totally, if all of them don't work, then we will have to do that despite of anything, because we are speaking about human lives, as we said, air pollution, uh, uh, pregnant women, children, and the Yerevan city center is overcrowded and we want to emphasize it. Thank you very much. The press would step in here and say, why just public transportation? It sounds like uh, the privileged would be more privileged by being able to drive their private cars these cars may also be big polluters. And uh, uh, um, a decision like this might actually force people to, or push people to use their private vehicle to a greater extent, contributing to additional pollution in the city. How is uh, the government and the various ministries gonna address this? If I may answer shortly, and then or maybe other colleagues will get into the conversation. Uh, only one thing, first of all, the, all of the public uh, private transportation cars are passing regular annual uh, checking of their vehicles, getting the, uh, the cards of, uh, um, uh, of their relevance, uh, you know, technical uh, relevance cards they are placing on their cars. Uh, while we have seen, I have seen myself also, the public transportation um, issues with uh, when they are too old or they are consuming too more uh, energy, gasoline or whatever, um, uh, creating too much of uh, pollution. Of course, it was not only public transportation, but also we have, uh, uh, we will uh, ask the Yerevan municipality to do the checking in the dangerous uh, facilities, factories as well. So, and this is only for a short time when the people are asked to stay home. So this is only during this period. Please don't, re don't forget that. Thank you, colleagues. I will stop for now. Thank you. Thank you, Minister of Emergency. Let me colleagues intervene here and uh, kind of ask for you to put out your what if statements, because for the moment, uh, in addition to this very active dialogue with the Ministry of Emergency, I don't see any other, you know, um, except for the telecom company, which, uh, by the way, has a suggestion for the Ministry of Health to allocate special hospitals for children, at least three, she has mentioned three uh, fixed capital to have uh, to allocate these uh, beds or hospitals for children as vulnerable groups. Um, and the press, uh, you know, endorses it uh, as, a, as a unique, because the children have, you know, uh, unique needs and it's, it can be a good initiative. Um, so I don't, I see this is the only statement so far placed. Uh, please, uh, let's try to speed up. We have like a few minutes. I have paused the clock, but uh, we have like around three minutes. Please speak up or post your, your what if statements. Um, and remember that this should be a what if statement in relation to another entity. I would like to react uh, to, to the request um, to allocate uh, some um, more fixed assets uh, as, as a medical institution for children. And I'd like to acknowledge the fact that um, also children bear the infection uh, more severely than um, all the other groups of the society. So, of course, uh, that will be uh, approved by the Ministry of Healthcare. But on the other hand, um, I'd like to bring our attention to more systemic issues. Um, so, to, to find out the root causes um, of, of the crisis, because um, if the problem exists and it, it gets uh, even uh, worse uh, with the time, which means that we had uh, 
not uh, relevant standards or we haven't monitored the, the, the uh, compliance to those standards, which means that uh, we need to update the standards as, as a first step and um, later on uh, to strengthen the monitoring mechanisms uh, to use uh, sensors, including uh, those in those public transportation means uh, to ensure that we have relevant monitoring means uh, and uh, up-to-date data on um, compliance with the standards, up-to-date standards um, of the city. So this is uh, uh, my request as a Ministry of Health, Healthcare to the Yerevan Municipality and the Ministry of uh, uh, Emergency. Uh, sorry, colleagues, I'd just like to uh, say that I've somehow been logged out of the game and I was unable to update anything anymore. And now I've reloaded the page and I can't join the Yerevan uh, room anymore. Is there any way we can kind of restore my progress? Anjan, um, unfortunately we cannot, I mean, you cannot join halfway through like we also talked through this uh, yesterday. So um, what I would suggest is um, that because the game is already ongoing, you cannot join it halfway through. So what I would suggest is really, please let's let's have you actively participating through the Zoom, so you can verbally tell your uh, uh, your suggestions and also react to all the suggestions that you receive as an energy company. But uh, when we start the second phase of the of the program of the simulation, I will reload the game for everyone, and then you can join. So we have one more round to play, and after that we will have the second phase and you can join again. Sorry about that. I mean, there's no other way to have you join. That's no problem. So is it okay if I uh, say a couple of things now? Uh, yeah, please. Um, so I think I was very surprised with uh, regards to how little conversation there was about the energy industry during the previous two phases. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's an air pollution issue and air pollution is largely caused by uh, burning fossil fuels. Uh, so, uh, and I think the energy company, the energy industry kind of uh, put uh, the, the, the foot forward in trying to establish collaboration with the Yerevan municipality and with the Ministry of Health. Uh, however, there was no uh, reaction from their side. And so from the Yerevan municipality, we uh, expected only trust. So mobile capital in the form of trust uh, for lobbying with, uh, the, with the legislative branch for more, uh, for more permissive taxation policies that would help us invest in renewable energies. And with respect to the uh, Ministry of Health, we, uh, we requested uh, all sorts of resources, uh, all three types of resources for uh, help in, uh, in employing filters in our, in our factories to help clean the smoke from harmful chemicals. Uh, and uh, we received criticism from the press, but I'm, I, I, I didn't hear anything from the other stakeholders that we requested resources from. Any reactions, colleagues? Yeah, the press is uh, picking up on this and writing a note here that, you know, where are the energy companies hiding? Uh, they have a key role to play in addressing, um, um, maybe I'll call it the energy crisis, energy crisis, and uh, no, pollution, addressing pollution, whatever crisis, anyhow. Where are the energy companies in this? They need to stick, pick up, you know. I think this is a very biased, I think, uh, viewpoint because the energy companies are actually uh, placing significant resources in uh, both both fixed mobile and human resources in, 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 in to encourage renewable renewable energy production. And we're receiving no feedback from the other stakeholders. So maybe the media should uh, somehow, instead of playing a more like uh, a, a, a antagonizing role, Maybe it can help to uh, it, it can help to establish collaboration between uh, the energy companies and the other stakeholders that the energy companies are trying to lobby with. Okay, so the press is taking a different approach then, and uh, um, we'll propose a few areas for collaboration. I'm not sure that it is the press job, but uh, you know, just to uh, trigger some conversations and maybe some public opinions about. Uh, how the current crisis could be resolved through partnership. 
So does the municipality or the Ministry of Health have anything to say about this or, or are they not willing to cooperate with the energy companies? Municipality? We have Yerevan municipality with us. Sarkis, are you here? Yes, yes, I'm here. Can you tell your what if statement? I cannot see it. Uh, just a minute, please. Uh, I put one statement for uh, asking for request of emergency ministry about transportation for stopping public transportation. And uh, we think we can stop it for a month for reduce the potential street trees. For a month? Yeah. Uh, is it realistic? Uh, it is really, uh, it has been criticized even for 42, 36 to 42 hours. But we remember both, and I know most of our colleagues here, that it was possible for a certain period, and I know your um, talk right now is based on the past experience, that if it is necessary, we can do that. Uh, I was just right now trying to uh, to bring uh, the level of awareness to a higher level um, uh, with the population, with the citizens, and the, with the with the press because they, we have really a very high level of criticism. So, uh, dear colleague. We need to think well about that, but for the for a couple of days, it is really necessary. It is a very first step for the public transportation and any dangerous um, sphere, any dangerous business to stop, to do the checkings and to find the source of pollution. So I, um, um, I support, I'll but one, one month maybe will be very, very, um, I don't know, critical. Um, we are studying the international experience and our decision based on this. Uh, this is uh, the thing that uh, do every country, every city in all the world. Ah, okay. It is, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I've already criticized it. And um, if I may, as a citizen, I, um, I don't have technical um, tools to place a suggestion but I would use Zoom <laughs> and interactive sessions. So what about environmental protection agencies, NGOs and academia and R&D centers that, were, that are engaged in this sector? How are they mobilizing um, their efforts to, um, to help this situation somehow? I don't know how this should be um, reflected here. As you know, we have a Zoom. So everything we can do uh, from home. Online. Online. Yeah, but um, I'm saying about um, the other players also, apart from state agencies, it's about um, NGOs and agencies that are engaged in the environmental protection sector. And also, uh, there should be some um, social mobilization also um, to apply all the knowledge and skills that are accumulated in the society to address this. I don't know how to place this um, in the, on the board, but this is suggestion maybe to municipality and maybe to UN team also to mobilize all the human talent and resources in this regard to address the challenge as soon as possible. Uh, has, uh, if I may suggest, maybe you can put uh, it in this, uh, yes, like, I also want to suggest. Note. you can put the parent uh, box, yes. maybe. It says uh, reported on it, actually. Here, if you see the screen, the young screen. parent. Yeah, I, I, I tried to type in, yeah. Okay, I will try again to type in. Okay. So colleagues, let's let's try to kind of wrap up in terms of our suggestions in the second round. It's taken quite some time. Um, I have some 
you know, slight news for you. Um, my connection, my to the board is now uh, not functioning for the moment, <laughs> but I will not. I will not restart the game. Of course, what we can do because it's it's working. It's just that I cannot progress to the next round, but we can still continue and carry on playing. So I will be kind of uh, looking at the screen that Lenny is sharing to see the latest updates. But um, yes, the uh, the request is that if uh, Hasmin, you can try to type in uh, under the Young Parent Bulletin Board, so we can also see it. Uh, and now, um, you know, my because we have one more round until the end of the phase one, so we will have to play it uh, verbally more, like uh, because you cannot place a new votive card, so you cannot place a new cell, uh, be, be, just for the reason that I cannot progress the game now. But um, let's uh, let's try to finalize this. I mean, we have heard all the suggestions and what are the requests for resources, and I even heard some of you already discussing what you are willing to give and what you are against. So um, if no further kind of big comments on this request that uh, you have received, please mobilize. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I would suggest that we progress to the third round. Just imagine it's the third round, uh, which will be exactly the same. And in the third round, all the players are requested to give uh, their suggestions, what if statements to the overall situation we have now in the city. So after all that we have discussed, we now know that the public transport and the buses are stopped for a while to go on checks. We know that certain like hospitals are allocated to treat children, you know, and all the other kind of uh, statements and what is that have been put forward, including by the municipality and energy company, telecom. Uh, so, you know, overall, just imagine what's going on in the city and what would be your suggestion in relation to what is going on. And I would suggest that in this case, uh, because I cannot see it and you cannot place a new cell. Let's all of us use the bulletin board. You all have uh, access to your bulletin board, like Nelly is sharing her screen. She's a telecom company and you can see that she's now trying to type in that board. Yeah, like she's doing what if. Uh, let's all of us use the board and we can see what we are saying. I mean, we can, of course, as previously verbally say, but also type it here. Uh, so for the third round, we will use the bulletin boards. Um, and let's go. I mean, one, one thing which we can actually, you know, try to imagine for the third round is, um, you know, we don't do this like, uh, it's, it's not happening all in one day, you know? I mean, time-wise, because this is a fictive setting, we can also agree like how we look at this time-wise. So let's imagine that, you know, all these measures have started to be implemented. It's been a week now that, uh, you know, after, after your last discussion, after the second round. So uh, the, the public transport was stopped for a few days for checks. We don't know, you may, we, we will learn in the third round what was the result. Some more hospital beds were, uh, you know, allocated for children. Um, awareness raising campaigns were done, you know, uh, UNDMT has getting, is getting engaged, etc. So let's imagine it's a week after and you make your statement to the whole situation with this in mind. So maybe the Minister of Emergency can update us on what is the situation. Yes, exactly. Uh, exactly, I was thinking about that. We need to uh, spread an update on the actual situation. Uh, we have realized monitoring of all of the districts of the city and we can uh, confirm that um, the three most uh, polluted zones uh, were due to a uh, couple of uh, factories existing in those regions. One of them located in the district of Shengavit, which was leaking of some chemicals, let's say. And uh, this, um, this uh, emergency is already um, uh, located and stopped. So the um, pollution level is, uh, uh, the pollution level is decreased, but still the citizens are requested to avoid visiting this area. The adjacent uh, uh, regions um, uh, regions were evacuated. The population had been evacuated to special shelters allocated by the Yerevan municipality. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, consider that it was realized according our um, our action plans, which should which is in place right now at any moment. If something happens, we need to have 
special designated areas to evacuate the pet people. As for the public transportation, it has slowly resumed. Several buses have been um, brought out from the service due to their high level of damage of their motors or so, and they are creating additional pollution. But the main pollution was one uh, factory, as I mentioned, a chemical factory. And I am, for this third phase, uh, requesting, as the Minister representative of the Ministry of Emergency Situations, requesting international help for uh, respiratory special masks uh, for all of the citizens willing to come back to their uh, so-called normal, um, but still they are uh, asked to, do, to go out only uh, with special respiratory or special masks designated for chemical spills or pollution, polluted areas. This is so far from me right now. Uh, well, in a week, uh, because of this increased work, uh, uh, my employees, most, like uh, like big part of my employees, get infected, and they were not able to continue their work. So I need an additional resources uh, from the municipality, uh, or I don't know any other body or UNDMT to be able to continue providing all the mobile and internet services uh, to the whole population. Can UNDMT or municipality support uh, us uh, on this direction? Uh, may I uh, intervene? Ministry of Emergency Situations is uh, ready to provide you with a uh, certain amount of human resources. Uh, our um, rescue service call center specialists will be uh, sent to you to help you organize as, as their work, daily work, is related to your activities so we are ready to provide you with uh, five uh, number five units of human resources in, for this matter thank you very yes. much yes yes municipality agree thank you this municipality what is your suggestion to the overall you know situation now in the city um. What, what I think in this situation, we have a civil defense plan and with cooperation, uh, cooperation with emergency ministry, uh, we can uh, start to uh, close this district. Uh, then if it needs to evacuate the people, citizens. Uh, so after that, we can understand the problem and starting to solve it. Okay. According to this plan. Okay. So what, it, what do you so do? The, have... For every type of situation, we have a plan. What to do? And do you need any engagement from your from your from your participants? Do you need any resources from them to implement your civil defense plan? Uh, yes, of course, uh, every this type of problem, we have a detailed, uh, uh, we have detailed description what to do. And uh, for first, we need to have uh, to do meeting with emergency ministry and uh, understand the, all the problem and step by step to solve it. Uh, I want to I come think emergency out. ministry know the well uh, more more know the more about that what we must do. Uh, thank you very much, Yerevan Municipality, and I want to come to help you answering this question. Uh, it was a correct question, correctly answered, and in my speech I have already suggest, not suggested, I have given an overview for one week. Uh, based on our action plans, the Ministry of Emergency Situations comes the, becomes the authority, the, the, main, um, uh, the main authority to cope with this, this project, uh, this problem and these issues. So we consider already that we have had the meetings, necessary meetings. Uh, and of course, we are go working side by side and the designated evacuation areas, the shelters for the citizens to be uh, evacuated from, from these um, affected 
a zone of the zone of disaster of the pollution of the leakage of chemical or chemical spill uh, so um, we we have another issue right now and we need help from uh, various stakeholders and also a uh, large engagement of international organizations to organize the first necessary help to the people evacuated. They need food, they need water supplies, they need uh, also medical assistance because they have been slightly affected, not all of them, the ones that have been affected, they are taken to the hospitals already. But also the people in the shelters, they need care. Uh, this is so far for one week uh, time span. Thank As you. A reason, we, have, uh, we have formed um, volunteer groups and um, asking emergency ministry to um, coordinate and give, um, not to say assignments, but somehow coordinate these volunteer groups activities, not to do chaotic uh, things in parallel with what government agencies are doing. Wonderful and wise decision, uh, dear uh, citizens, dear volunteers. It is a very important aspect of cooperation uh, with the communities and with the volunteering organizations. So uh, let us say that we have uh, or we can have still meetings uh, to uh, with, with specialists um, in order to organize your work, uh, and uh, for in order in order to organize that, we have created a special group, a working group uh, under the Ministry of Emergency Situations, uh, led by the Deputy Minister. Uh, uh, but led by the deputy minister, he's the uh, he's in charge for this organization. The special committee is um, uh, taking notes and writing down all of the possible aid coming uh, or assistance coming from both volunteering organizations, uh, different NGOs acting here in the region, and also we have already re received certain amount of assistance from international organizations and some uh, medical uh, first aid and first need supplies are in way or on their way. Uh, so for now, we are only needing uh, some assistance from the airport. So here, um, uh, just in order to receive the goods and to allocate them, uh, we will need the volunteers only in, in, the, in terms of um, distribution of these goods to the public, to the people needed, needy. Um, if I may, uh, from the DMT part, uh, I, I would like to say that we have activated two additional clusters. So now we can support with the provision of food and nutrition to, to the uh, evacuated people. So it will be done jointly with uh, UNICEF, UNDP, WFP and Armenian Red Cross Society. But we need uh, the concrete numbers of people uh, and, and uh, if, if possible to understand how long they are going to stay over there. So to plan uh, properly uh, the support. And also we can, we suggest to activate the airport emergency response plan that was uh, developed jointly with the ministry a few years ago and the airport staff. So to understand how we can proceed with the cargo, with the uh, simplified measures for, uh, for uh, transferring the goods and uh, a, uh, humanitarian aid to the uh, ministry and to the people that, that has this need. Over. Uh, uh, may I say yeah. just one comment on that from okay. the ministry? emergency situations, yes. Just a quick comment. Thank you very much, Armen. Uh, we were expecting these actions, of course, and we were ready for uh, for these actions. Uh, thank you very much to activate these clusters. I just want to mention that uh, we, in, in, in uh, terms of the cargo uh, issues, to solve the cargo issues, we have had uh, multiple discussions and an, uh, and an ongoing agreement with the DHL, uh, uh, post service, you know, uh, worldwide uh, known DHL uh, service for organizing the cargo um, receiving to the country, the humanitarian aid. So this is already activated. We can go further. Thank you. Over. Thank you. Um, can yeah. I ask, Let me say, Armin, 
Yeah, I mean, a municipality, please go ahead. But then I would also like to ask some of our players, like the health ministry, really like having an important role here, maybe to come in with their uh, update and suggestion, and also okay. the press. Okay. So, uh, so one, one, first, then, mm -hmm. Only can one comment. Uh, let me tell uh, for emergency situation. Uh, the municipality for this type of situation have reserved funds for uh, civil uh, defense and we are ready to provide uh, mobile capital, fixed capital, human resources and everything that needs. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Yerevan Municipality. We are really very happy to cooperate with you. That's just great. Uh, I'd like to update about... Um, about our um, engagement um, and coordination activities. Uh, so well, given the fact of uh, a new source of the crisis in Shengavit district, I'd like to um, request from the Ministry of Emergency and Telecom Company to uh, locate all the persons uh, who live uh, within the area of Shengavit district and to, to start a communication campaign uh, to make sure they are aware of the risks and um, uh, they have the relevant resources to, to protect themselves uh, from the infection. Um, as well as we identified that, uh, that the um, uh, hospital that uh, is located in, in Shengavit district can, can be specialized in, um, in um, uh, uh, providing healthcare to, to those who are infected already uh, in, in the district. Uh, so we are ready as a Ministry of Healthcare uh, to ensure the training of the doctors, uh, to be the specialized doctors there, and to provide um, all kinds of um, other resources uh, for the hospital uh, to, to transform its purpose. Um, and of course, I'd like to uh, ask the energy company uh, to ensure the sustainable energy cons uh, and energy supply uh, for, for the medical institution. Uh, um, and the DMT and civil society organizations and the citizens um, to provide the masks, uh, to, to distribute the masks to, to all, all the uh, people uh, that are living nearby um, and to um, start evacuation um, from the Yerevan municipality if that is possible and to the extent of possibility and uh, to provide the psychosocial uh, support to, to the uh, population living nearby uh, to, to make sure that uh, we don't have um, worsening situation with regard to the mental health. Um, if no comments, I want to comment on that right now. Uh, may I, Tatevik? Yeah, yeah, sure. I was just wanted to one, one small comment to the Ministry of Health, which was quite a very comprehensive, excellent like statement. But just to add that, you know, in, in Schengavit community, where you have hospitals that you would like to use, there's also an issue of, I think, evacuating the patients from this exactly. hospital. To, exactly. To like, I don't know, I think you have a maternity ward in Schengavit. Yes. So that's uh, I, I want to, to add on uh, for this, uh, that my, my intervention was, uh, uh, it, um, it, it was related to your statement. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, dear um, health ministry, I think it was health ministry, right? talking yeah. right now so uh, we have uh, uh, we have to uh, we have to tell that the uh, medical institution located in uh, i think there are two of them uh, not only the health, uh, not only the maternity hospital but also the number 6 uh, Shengavit uh, center, if I'm not mistaken. So both of them should be evacuated and they must go, the, the specialists can be allocated in, in, other, uh, in other hospitals, maybe in Erebuni, Muratsan and uh, other uh, relevant uh, institutions. Uh, and for the people, they, they have been already evacuated during this one week period. So we are talking already one week later of the situation. The rest is totally relevant to the to the case. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And dear players, any feedback to the Minister of Health because they had suggestions for the whole situation and almost all partners. I just have a question. Can you can you see any of my um, um, what, uh, what the press is writing? So, because I don't have connection to the board, Nelly, can you please scroll down the newspaper? So I am can... going down. Yes, yes, if we scroll down, we can see it, yeah. What's the last one? The general, general public requires a systemic approach. 
No, so I've written a lot since then. I think maybe I'm also logged out then. I've been like writing and writing and writing. <laughs> I have the same issue. I have the same issue. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah my, I mean, I basically yeah. just done general updates, kind of like from the press point of view, like some of the discussions, you know, like maybe reporting on um, partnerships between different UN agencies and, you know, um, just making kind, kind of headlines. Uh, yeah. but, but I don't think, I mean, it was more interesting when the conversation actually happened. Um, okay. Who would like to know, please? Yeah, so, I mean, reflections. so what was the last one that you heard? Uh, it was the general, uh, uh, just a second. It was the general public requires a systematic a systemic approach to resolve the issue, NGOs, academia, citizens, etc., need to work together with the state agencies and the municipality. This was the okay. last one. So it's blocking here, but um, I remember. So one of the things that I said was, you know, uh, civil society is kind of like um, uh, replicating their amazing uh, work that they initiated during the uh, the crisis and the, the displacement crisis, kind of doing voluntary work and self-organizing, things like that. And then I spoke, spoke about this joint UN initiative that Armen was talking about uh, and to really, you know, address the most urgent needs and how the collaboration with the municipality would look like. And then also I mentioned something on the cargoes and DHL and like how important this partnership would be to, uh, to resolve the cargo issue in the city. It's very um, important. Thank you. Yeah. Any feedback from the citizen, from Hasmik? Do you have any further feedback? On, on what press is doing? Or, or... No, 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 no. On the, overall, on the overall situation from all other. No, before the press, when we were talking, the, sorry, the hospital evacuation, the health ministry suggestions, etc. cetera. Um, um, if you can, I mean. No, I mean, um, no. Um, okay. Okay, colleagues, I don't see the screen anymore, so I don't know what's, uh, what's going on, but uh, the energy company, Vahan, we lost you in the second round. Do you have any more suggestions for the overall situation in the city? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think we're, uh, the, energy, the energy companies have a more long-term view of the crisis itself. So uh, from, from what I've been hearing from the discussion so far, we're concentrating on uh, isolated incidents. And uh, it, it's more like a crisis response in the short term, more so than in the long term. Uh, the energy companies are investing fixed capital into into facilities that help uh, the, the, into research for renewable uh, for renewable energy production, as well as cleaner cleaner use of uh, fossil fuels. Um, and I think uh, because the municipality and the Ministry of Health have not been uh, responsive as of yet. We will, we will, uh, we will no longer pursue cooperation with, with them, and try to work directly with the citizens, with with our own, with with our 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 own resources. Especially considering the fact that uh, we are we have most most of the know-how concerning the actual technical aspects of the air pollution. Okay. That's uh, very interesting with consideration of the second phase also upcoming that uh, you know you don't know yet, but you know it will be interesting to hear your views. So colleagues, like last thing before we actually try to summarize the first phase and um, rejoin the game. Um, this was really very interesting discussion. I made some notes as well in terms of the interlinkages and how we as institutions and you know key players try to cooperate to address the issue of the air pollution. Uh, and just one thing for kind of to step back and think and maybe comment is like, you know, just have in mind how your organizations are related to each other when you respond to the crisis. So um, with, with in mind that in the second round, as you know, in the second phase, uh, with every round, I will be introducing a new crisis. So uh, we, will, we will do the same, like we will go around in the same way of, uh, you know, suggesting what ifs and interacting with each other. But let's try to play a bit more like speedily. So, um, you know, we, we have some time to play at least a few crises before the end of the game. 
Um, and yeah, you don't know what the crises are. None of the players know. So it's going to be interesting in that sense, but also just think, you know, how you are going to cooperate with each other in this setting with already your experience from the first round. Um, so if no major or further comments on this, um, I suggest we take the break now, the intermission. Thank you very much for a really interesting game uh, for the first phase. Very interesting discussion and I think excellent cooperation, in fact. Um, what we have to do, because uh, many of us were disconnected, including myself, uh, please uh, don't like stay on the line on the Zoom call. You can just uh, mute yourself, uh, but to stay on the call. And for the, uh, for the platform, for the game itself, just close all of your browsers. And once we come back, we will reconnect from the beginning. But please close your browsers. Otherwise, I will not be able to relaunch the game. So I'll do the Are same. We now? OK. Closing no. the tab. Right? You just close, close the browsers. Close yeah. the browsers. Yeah, so you can just re um, uh, reset the, the tab. Just click.
to colleagues, you can see the screen. I'm quickly progressing now to the second phase. So we will just fast forward. Okay, so this was our intermission when we had a break. And now we are going to the second uh, phase. Let me just pause here briefly, uh, just to make sure that you are all seeing a slightly updated way version of the screen, uh, like Nelly is sharing. And uh, if you do, then um, I will I will start it. Uh, so the chronic condition you remember previously in the in the circle in the middle we had the chronic condition, the air pollution levels around which we were discussing. So now in the cells like next to it, I will be putting uh, like a, a, a kind of recording in progress. Yeah, I will be placing a, a, a different kind of crisis situations to which you will be you will have time to react. Usually the round is around 10 minutes. Of course, we have been taking much more time previously to allow all of us to get into the game. Let's try to slightly speed up this time. Uh, but again, when you are um, faced with a crisis and you have to respond and react, first of all, we will be again speaking up, like discussing with each other, uh, suggesting our what ifs, but also bear in mind around, you know, the overall, not just quick fixes, like we were discussing yesterday, not just to do something immediately and only for now, but importantly also uh, think of the measures that will help to ensure the sustainability or of your solution or how your suggested infrastructure will be durable and resist future similar shocks and crises. So, um, let me just try to place this down. Okay, so um, I believe you can see it. I'm very sorry to announce that in Yerma city, we just had an earthquake, a five uh, degree like magnitude earthquake. The epicenter was near Yerevan and we have 10% infrastructure damage, the most dilapidated parts. The services are of course interrupted, the public services, and there is overall panic in the city because it all comes on top of what we had in the first phase. So please play your cards. And please be vocal. <laughs> so yeah, and for the press, of course, this is like uh, big news, sad big news. For the civilians, you can also react in terms of you know what this means. Uh, in addition to the panic, and you know what what do you need immediately? What's going on? Um, Tatev, you said infrastructure is damaged. Is there? Telecom communication or? Uh, it's, it's interrupted for the moment. The telecom communication, I mean, you, I'm sorry, but sorry to say we have all been through these kind of scenarios in real life as well. So yeah. let's let's take it that for the first, uh, I don't know, some few hours we have issues with all the services like and infrastructures. Uh -huh. And infrastructure is damaged, meaning that we have, we don't have complete destruction of uh, buildings, but we have damaged, you know, infrastructure. Do we have approximate uh, numbers of potential casualties or uh, on the population? Yeah, we have uh, we have let's say uh, around uh, two two uh, like one thousand people still missing. It's still the early like we we have to you know locate them, and we have around ten thousand reporting people that have injuries. But it can be different injuries from very light to just shocks to really serious injuries. So I suppose that there is a need for search and rescue operations. Yes. Okay. Armenian uh, Ministry of uh, Emergency Situations has already launched search and rescue operations with the rescue service forces. And I am placing right now my uh, what if with mobile capital of 10 and human resources 15. And uh, we are um, immediate response SAR operations, search and rescue, surveillance devices like UAVs are sent out to monitor the coverage. Uh, and of course, uh, I will uh, set for telecom, uh, telecom company uh, once their uh, services are restored to, uh, to connect to the people and we, we will require creation of immediate as possible. Um, or I don't know, we, we can 
launch the application, which we presume to have uh, an application of uh, marking them safe or marking them needing assistance application from the citizens. So I'm placing another step for telecom company and we will see the rest. Okay, let's let's try to you know make this a bit like livelier. So the Ministry of Health allocate medical institutions. Oh no, you changed it? No. Ah, sorry, Nelly, I'm looking at your screen. So health ministry is allocate medical institutions to serve the victims. So you're allocating, yeah, fixed capital, but you don't have any um, ask for others so far. Immediate response. Uh, the press is is um is is asking for for information from the state agencies uh, what to do with people that are missing people are panicking people need information what's happening yes and uh, dear civilian please speak up yeah i've i've posted on this um board um demanding emergency situation and press to inform citizens what to do Mm -hmm. And also, um, I'm asking the um, uh, Ministry of um, Health to do, um, like, to place, um, uh, like, spots even in the streets with all the masks and everything needed for people to take, so not to forget the air pollution yes. uh, problem from the first round, so that we don't have the crisis doubled, <laughs> if possible. So... Um, I don't know whether, are there hotlines that we can call? Are there uh, emergency helping spots in the streets or in the communities that people can go to? What are the instructions for citizens what to do apart from going out of the... And Yerevan municipality in this connection as well, what is your role? Do you have anything for the citizens also in connection with, in, in partnership with the emergency ministry maybe or the health ministry, what should they do? I saw 911 um, call center number. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what are the um, instructions? So, I mean... um, okay. Yes, municipality. Of in, the, in this type of situation, we also have a, a plan what to do, and we must cooperate with uh, emergency ministry. Uh, to, first of all, we need to have a meeting. Uh, we need to uh, uh, do announcement to do alarm for citizens. Uh, then do uh, the point, si point by point what in plan in this type of situation. Uh, if I may speak up uh, on behalf of the Ministry of Emergency Situations, thank you very much, everybody, colleagues. I was just. Um, uh, using the time you while you were speaking to allocate the what if statement for the um, uh, telecom uh, for Yerevan municipality right now shelters required. I will just you ask for shelters in the municipality. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yes, of course, we are asking for shelters. We have addressed to the health ministry, which just designated uh, health uh, institutions. Uh, a triage center to be allocated so that we know. And of course, uh, we will also ask Yerevan municipality to add, uh, to help us with, uh, with uh, cars, although we will also provide uh, mo mobile capital 10, but we need also other mobile capital cars uh, for transportation of the uh, people to the institutions of the um, uh, affected people. So we, we are asking for three or uh, five. I will place five and then you see how many you can provide us with. Uh, right now, uh, as suggested by the Yerevan municipality, it is within our uh, daily routine. We must uh, have a parallel meeting right now of the emergency management authority. So right now, uh, as far as it is a city level, we will have the city level emergency management authority meeting comprised of, and this authority will be consisting of the um, uh, deputy minister uh, leading the task 
because this is not nationwide, but this is a mail, the capital. So we will need the deputy minister to lead the, uh, the whole uh, process. And then we will uh, ask uh, representatives from each ministry and uh, uh, public and governmental organizations and stake major stakeholders to be involved in this uh, we uh, in in this um, advisory group uh, after the meeting we come up with a very quick meeting and we come up uh, with a press release statement uh, on uh, on the actual situation and of course uh, we need the support of the telecom uh, in launch I have asked uh, already in launch of an application for safe or needing assistance application for the citizens and at the same time we need to spread through the press the necessary uh, actions to do um, first of all to see how many people if there are children in the schools and what time the earthquake happened, uh, the most biggest collection of the people and the rescue teams are already on, on place. Uh, the search and rescue operation has started. We have only 72 hours to do the whole search and rescue operations. After that, the rescue service will stop the search and rescue uh, operations. This is based on uh, international regulations and the golden time, as we said. So further, we see how we do. Uh, at the same time, after the assessment of the situations, situation, we will address to the UNDMT for the international assistance uh, of other rescue teams if we require them. Thank okay, you. Uh, thank you, Arminijan. Yes. But but I would like to add that in parallel with the search and rescue operations, we can start the MIRA assessment, minimal uh, minimum initial rapid assessment, to understand the needs and to to formulate the the action plan for humanitarian aid assistance uh, from the different international organizations. So I think it should be organized in parallel with the search and rescue operations and uh, jointly with the Ministry of Emergency Situations. So uh, as far as I know, we have trained uh, rescuers uh, who knows how to use the MIRA uh, uh, assessment toolkit and UNDP stands ready to support with the assessment process as well. Thank you, Armin. Uh, I already added MIRA together with UNDMT. Uh, so we will have, uh, we will increase our number of human resources for that. Uh, for that action uh, to allocate them to organize the MIRA. We will add three more people. Uh, I think this is more than enough right now because the other stuff is involved. We have only 25 human resources. The other stuff is involved in the search and rescue. And we also uh, have medical teams working in the rescue uh, service. And they are also sent out to help the Ministry of Health uh, as well, and we have a designated um, psychological assistance teams, uh, and they will be also sent to the field. Um, the thank you. Let me just, can I, colleagues, let me just quickly come in here and ask you to, first of all, for the civilian and press to please endorse or criticize the what-if statements that you see. And also, uh, dear emergency ministry and others, you have direct requests from other players. Maybe you can also address those. For example, for emergency ministry from the energy company, uh, it's, there's a suggestion to communicate to them uh, to show where the main damage is so they can prioritize resources. Uh, and they're also suggesting to mobilize all the resources to recover the lost production potential. So uh, it's, it's asking for mobile capital as well from the emergency ministry. We have from the health. So soon the round, I mean, we will have the second part of this round where you can actually endorse, increase, or you know, allocate resources to each other. Um, so, and also from the telecom company, they're asking to provide human resources for renovation of infrastructure from the Ministry of Emergency. Uh, please let's also in our statements, I mean, in our kind of, it's, it's second, yeah, I'll just go to the round B. So you can already uh, negotiate around the what if statements and also uh, react to the request to you directly. Um, you can see them as you click on the what ifs. Uh, and I'm again asking the civilian Hasik to please, you know, show your reaction as well to the what if yeah. statement. And the yeah, person is coming in here saying. Yes, please. Okay. The, the press is coming in here saying, um, 
you know, it's great that all these different actors are coming together, but what about the people um, uh, that are still missing? Uh, we are encouraging people to use Facebook and other platforms to, to um, announce if they are safe or if they're missing people so that we can, together with the civil society, um, start kind of understanding who is lost and where they were last seen. But it, uh, we wonder what the, the government and the international community can do with this data to, uh, to benefit from um, volunteer kind of reporting. Uh, to the press, I wanted to say, dear uh, Louise, it was you, right? Asking for the yeah. missing people. Uh, first of all, uh, in my talk, I, I said that we already asked and we are presumably launching the application uh, already activating, it exists, it should exist, activating the application for marking them safe or needing assistance for those who can connect. And also for the SAR operation, search and rescue, it means exactly uh, looking for missing people. That's on and it will be on during 72 hours until the people are possibly alive under the debris. So it is on, the search and rescue teams are working on the place. That's uh, for that question. If I missed something, please. Uh, question, please thank you, thank you, it's very helpful. Um, I think my question from the press is more how you're gonna benefit from these platforms that are not government driven, um, like Facebook, because um, the press, of course, will encourage everyone to use Facebook because we know that everyone in Armenia uses Facebook. Will you be able to use this information or will there be a duplication? Because if not, maybe we should ask the government go out and say, don't use Facebook. It's not uh, convenient at this point in time. Um, uh, okay, I understood the question. Uh, just or maybe, or maybe... Yeah, Armin, please. Or maybe we, you can you can use uh, the other uh, Facebook official, I don't know how do you call it, pages or something like this, because I know the ministry has similar uh, pages in Facebook, the DR national platform has similar, so you can actually uh, uh, provide information through Facebook as well as an official information provided right. by the government. Okay, I, I just want to comment. Of course, right now, at this moment, uh, in 2021, when we are talking, uh, apart from the game, uh, we don't have an application like I am suggesting, but something we need to have, have in one place, one application general for all, because uh, nobody can uh, follow Facebook uh, that way. There are safe, uh, I mean, I know there are tools in Facebook, of course, uh, this is possible. We have uh, uh, a department of um, connect, uh, a department of um, human relations uh, uh, and uh, mass media department in the Ministry of Emergency Situations, and we can allocate one or two people to follow those major Facebook tools. But at the same time, it would be more professional to have another separate, not another, but a countrywide application uh, for that. Uh, from telecom company. If you look at the bulletin board, the telecom company says we have created already the application now it's available for citizens to download wonderful wonderful that was my suggestion for telecom thank you telecom very much you have done a great job um can i say something as a citizen i see three different institutions cre um, talking about um awareness raising uh, I, I think informing uh, campaign and i think as a citizen i might be lost what um which, which channel to follow, because there is UN saying awareness raising campaign and Yerevan municipality and also emergency ministry. This is the first point that I'm getting lost whom, whom to follow, uh, where to get the newest up, the recent updates. And um, second thing is that uh, I want to ask is the transport, uh, public transportation working because it was shut down during the previous phase. And the third point I wanted to raise is to ask uh, government to ensure that public and also private medical institutions are opening their doors for um, injured citizens so that, I mean, I uh, me as a citizen, I can go to the nearest medical um, institution to get the help. Um, thank you. Um, I'd like to step in as a government now. As, as the Ministry of Health, um, I'd like to make sure that um, 
um, all the activities are coordinated um, on a higher level. Um, so all the ap applications and websites are now coordinated uh, into one. Uh, so a new website is available, is created to make sure the information about the available institu medical institutions um, are there and available to m all the victims and, and the relatives. Especially a new hotline is created. Um, there is a third to the mobile application where people can self-report uh, their, uh, their situation and their relatives and friends can uh, make sure the information is available for them based on um, simple uh, data entry about, uh, uh, about the personal data of, of their relatives. Um, as well as, um, I'd like to ask the DMT uh, Yerevan municipality to provide more equipment and medication for, for the operation of the medical institutions, as well as a new uh, mobile hospital is deployed. Uh, so I would like to ask the telecom company and energy um, uh, a company to provide the means of communication and energy supply for the new uh, mobile hospital. Uh, um, as a DMT, can I respond to, to the request? Uh, first, we need a concrete uh, number of equipments and uh, type of equipment. What kind of medical equipment uh, do you need? And the time frame as well. So we'll try to uh, solve this issue through the W. WHO and the UNDP partnership modality as a cluster uh, lead, WHO will follow up on this. Uh, but we need uh, the, the list of equipment, as I've mentioned. And uh, from the uh, issue raised by the citizen actually related to the public awareness, it is uh, coordinated from the ministry. So the, the information you are receiving from DMT, from UN agencies or from other sources, this is the official information received from the uh, Ministry of Emergency Situations. So we don't distribute any other kind of public awareness. Uh, Thank you very much, Armen Jan. That was a very important point to make, an important statement. Uh, and thank you, Tigran, to mention that uh, the, the coordination is from one center, both. Well, we are both the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Emergency Situations. They are coordinating the situation. But the Ministry of Emergency Situations has the uh, role of the lead agency and the responsible uh, authority. And as I had already mentioned, all of the important uh, um, actors in this sphere, they are already gathered under one umbrella of this um, emergency, emergency management authority. All the actors, uh, actions, raising uh, public awareness, raising campaigns, uh, and uh, the whole activity um, reorganized governmentally is um, coordinated through this emergency management authority so far. Over. Okay, colleagues. So, um, do we have any further reaction, uh, uh, or I proceed to the next to the next phase? Because uh, I think we are ready. Right. So, remember what you have committed. Uh, remember what was requested from you. And what is the situation? And in the next round. Okay, in addition to what we are facing, I'm sorry to inform that it's somewhat natural as well. We have power outage, but it's related to the issues with the nuclear power plant, which is providing most of the kind of electricity to the city in our setting. And because of the earthquake, uh, they have stopped the operation to, for maintenance. So the entire city is left without electricity. It will last at least a few days, we know. So a few of the things and the, the solutions that we have thought of and uh, actually uh, suggested, platforms, etc., online, bear in mind that they are not available anymore because you don't, you're out of power. And please also note that um, the, the pressure that you will have on the different institutions like the health ministry and the hospitals uh, in case they don't have a plan B for, that, for these type of scenarios. And also for the energy companies, of course. Um, so for everyone, colleagues, the floor is yours. Um, we have one power question. for a few days. Uh, Tevik Jan, one question. We need to know what season we are in right now. I was going to ask that. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah. let's imagine it's it's the it's spring. This is March. I mean, I don't want to overcomplicate. We are in March. <laughs> okay, thank you. At least, thank you. We are not in winter. Yeah, that's why I don't want to overcomplicate. But yeah. Mm -hmm. 
um, municipality. I see a what if, but it's still not populated. So you can speak up as you type, or you can, you know. Yes, and yes, I understand. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was going to say that I think uh, given the fact that nuclear facilities have been damaged, the priority of the energy companies in collaboration with the Ministry of Emergency Services should be to make sure that the, the damage in the nuclear facilities doesn't have anything to do with leakage of, of the nuclear waste. So this would be the first, I think, priority. And then once, once the damage is contained in the nuclear facilities, then we can uh, concentrate resources, like I said in the previous, uh, previous phase, on uh, investing in, in mobile uh, energy production facilities uh, that, that can be used in the mobile homes, as well as, uh, as, well as repairing any of the additional damage that has taken place. So, so first priority uh, containing the nuclear uh, nuclear damage, and then the second priority is uh, regaining uh, overall power. Okay. The press is reporting that um, the number of carbon monoxide poisoning is going up. Oh my uh, God. <laughs> and they, they're, they're pointing to the US and Texas, what recently happened there, and wondering if the same is going to happen in Yerevan. So, dear civilian, you must be in panic. Yeah, I, 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 I am in panic, and I have covered several. <laughs> um, um, Okay, so I assume that uh, normal work, education, public services, everything is stopped now. Mm -hmm. And um, apparently, because there is additional pressure on these agencies, there should be a need for these um, volunteer groups that have been formed during the first phase to be used by uh, emergency ministry and also health ministry. Because I, I guess um, there are vulnerable groups of people. Um, I mean, as a young parent, <laughs> of course, I'm uh, concerned with my family and children, but also there are vulnerable groups of society that are helpless now. Um, um, okay, th there are a couple of perspectives. As a pa passive uh, recipient, I'm waiting for instructions. But on the other hand, as a citizen in panic, I might do chaotic things and uh, even place additional layer of burden on this um, um, right. agent. For instance, I can, I can start cutting forests because there is cut of um, electricity and I'm not sure where when the electricity would be uh, re recovered, restored. So I'm also now doing another environmental damage plus the first and second and third phases of um, problems. And in any case, I was going to say, uh, like being in panic as a citizen, you may eventually wish to simply leave the city. I mean, you know, take everything you have and just leave. I'm yeah. just, I don't say you have to do this. I'm just imagining what, you know, citizens may react if there are so many things going on in the city. I may cause additional problems, frankly. I'm not, I'm not sure what, which role to play. I mean, causing additional problems or doing uh, proactive uh, support to other groups of society. Um, you do both. Let's make one. Uh, <laughs> as you can and I can do both, frankly. Yeah, by helping, I can co cause another chaotic thing. Yeah, also. of course. Uh, one thing I wanted to say, uh, in addition to something that has been said uh, for the mobile um, devices for creating energy, so mobile heaters, etc. I have uh, asked the municipality if we, we can create uh, these resources for the citizens. Uh, and, uh, and also, if we don't have these um, devices underhand in storage or so, uh, or so uh, we can ask uh, UNDMT uh, if we can ask for international help for this kind of first aid, supplies, uh, food, mobile heaters, etc. So I have already placed a what if on this matter. Uh, and as for the citizens, we will, um, of course, address to the press uh, again, uh, ag again and again, every day on a daily basis, uh, there will be some updates uh, every day, I think, one, one time, uh, coming from the Emergency Management Authority on, on the situation. Uh, there will be, uh, of course, there will be 
positive information on the people saved, on, uh, on the uh, lost people found, uh, on the international or local organizations um, um, cooperation uh, established. And of course, uh, this positive information is really very important. It, uh, it has a psychological role on the pub public. So we will discourage any uh, dissemination of uh, panic among the people and uh, uh, centers for uh, social assistance will be created together with another ministry which is not in place right now but it is in uh, emergency management authority. This is the social affairs um, ministry, which should be on place and in play in this case. So presumably they are here and we have addressed to them as well. Um, I'm imagining the situation that there is electricity cut, so I can know, so in, the, in conditions of air pollution that I was advised not to go out or at least to minimum um, walking in the streets. Uh, I cannot uh, organize delivery of food, for instance, for my family. And I cannot, well, there would be another procedure for buying in the shops because there is no electricity and there should be uh, police involved to ensure like protection and there are no robberies in the shops also. Um, I'm imagining a very depressive, <laughs> frankly, scenarios of what might happen. It's going, be, it's going to be quite chaotic. You're absolutely right. Um, especially yeah. with the online payment system will not be working. You yeah. cannot deliver food or anything to your house because it's it's impacting the whole city. So mm -hmm. you have to take stock on of, you know, what you have. People are going to be in the shops like crazy to shop for, I don't yeah. know, like buckwheat and other stuff. So, oh. you know. It's, it's, yeah, it's the typical thing, but I really want to invite the Yerevan municipality to, to make a move or at least to speak up, you know, what, what, what are you up to, Sarkisja? I don't see uh, Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to tell Armine that all the needs uh, we're going to satisfy. Um, next, I want to uh, say, I want to ask um, to energy company, to provide uh, vital objects uh, with so alternative source, source of power supply, because without power, nothing we, we can do. Uh, and last thing, I'm disconnected. Oh, <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Sorry. You are you have already uh, energy supply uh, outreach, energy outreach. <laughs> 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 so actually, colleagues, as a DMT, uh, I just uh, uh, posted the, the support that UN, uh, UN DMT can provide. First, again, we need to understand what are the critical facilities that need these uh, power generators, uh, like hospitals, I don't know, uh, food production companies, etc. So to ensure that uh, the, the issue with electricity is solved in a critical institutions, critical facilities. So we are ready to procure some of them and uh, distribute it they were, they immediately. They were asking for from Yerevan municipality, Armenian, but it's good that the DMT can provide. Because now yeah, of course, DMT can provide, and uh, this is a unique practice, a normal practice when we can support with this. Of course, if, if uh, uh, municipality has some funds allocated for this, they can distribute it through the UNDP, so we can procure immediately using our international procurement system as well. Um, the second, actually, whatever was raised uh, from the Ministry of Emergency Situations to support with some heating stuff, some heating equipment, it can be provided as well. So again, we need concrete uh, numbers uh, of uh, what kind of equipment, what kind of stuff do, do you need. This is a common practice. We need to understand uh, what kind of support is really needed. And uh, Armenian Red Cross Society and uh, WFP, UNICEF, they are ready to contribute to support with this as well. This much from my side. Thank you very much, Armen Jan. I see uh, that you, uh, I see your um, answers are totally in line with our requirements. And one thing that I wanted to say that uh, please, guys, uh, remember the first uh, initial injects that we had is that 10%, right, of the um, 
buildings are affected. So we need to say how much, how many, how, how much of everything is damaged, and the rest of people who need to be evacuated. Uh, of course, we are also not not only speaking about the destroyed houses or destroyed buildings, but also the buildings that are damaged and not relevant anymore for uh, living there. So there will be certain evacuations for non-affected people, but their livelihoods or their um, uh, houses have been damaged. So the, our uh, collaboration with the Yerevan municipality and UNDMT will be very uh, intense, our cooperation, in order to provide these people with shelters, with food and with all necessary supplies, as mentioned already. I think uh, we're on a good path. No panic, please. I'm trying to Our be part um, Yeah, I, I would like to clarify one thing. I know that there is a plan for Yerevan city related to the evacuation. I know that uh, some districts of Yerevan should be evacuated to other cities. So like, for example, Gyumri, Ashtarak, uh, Abovian, yeah. etc. Yeah, we need to understand what is the number of people to be evacuated and if the municipality has enough capacity to proceed with this. This is really important to know. And if some of the, some number of population are going to stay in the city because uh, usually people prefer to stay close to their uh, buildings, close to their houses. Uh, so uh, especially the ones that have some casualties uh, under the ruins, etc. So they are looking for their uh, relatives. Yeah. So in this in this regard, we should understand what are the exact number for for the population that needs shelter here in Yerevan, uh, and uh, what is the number uh, that uh, needs to be supported uh, from DMT side, especially to municipality of Yerevan to proceed with the evacuation. Uh, one thing, uh, colleagues, uh, if you don't mind, I want to give a clarification on the situation. Uh, after a certain time, uh, maybe 24 hours have passed or something, uh, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Emergency Situations sends out clarifications on the um, on the earthquake um, damage zone, as we had sent in the first phase, we did uh, mm -hmm. monitoring uh, through our various uh, uh, monitoring systems and early warning systems and warning and uh, so seismic um, um, center and so far. So we have, we must already have, and presumably we have right now, uh, the... Um, uh, the exact area of damage, uh, because it depends on where the cracks or which uh, which falls are activated for earthquake, like Garni uh, Garni break or Abovian break, and depending on that, which region of Yerevan is most affected. Uh, for instance, we can presume that right now we have uh, no, we have the epicenter. Uh, towards uh, Achapnyak district, which is uh, heavily uh, overloaded with um, um, multi-residential houses, uh, high buildings, and there the damage will be very severe. Uh, but the southern part of the city, like uh, Shengavit, like uh, other uh, uh, other parts of the city, they may be not so much affected. So we will need evacuation from the destroyed buildings, damaged buildings, Armenjan, we can, uh, if we know that already 10% of the buildings are destroyed, then maybe 30, 40% of the buildings are uh, out of use anymore. So all of the population will either need require uh, evacuation to other cities, or as you said, in, tempor uh, in, in shelters, uh, temporarily located, uh, not so far from their homes. Like that, we, uh, we have uh, agreement uh, on, on the areas like football stadiums or football uh, planes uh, in, in the um, sports schools in those districts and, and so far for the temporary shelters to be located uh, or uh, kindergartens or schools to be used as temporary shelters. Colleagues, uh, thank you, dear Minister of Emergency. Uh, can I ask, uh, because we are almost approaching to the end of this round, uh, the Yerevan municipality, Sarkisian, I hope you can hear us. Uh, yeah. Because you cannot place any cards, can you uh, also like uh, comment or, you know, if you have anything to add 
So you are you have like a central role. It's it's in the in your city. You are the authority of the city as well. So maybe you have something to add before we close the round because we have limited time now for this round. Yes, yes. I want to add one thing. The first of all, we near municipality need to open all streets and uh, uh, open uh, mobility uh, for hospitals for everything because we understand after earthquake uh, we cannot uh, have a mobility in the city so this is first thing that we need to do um, then we must uh, to uh, recover the electricity how we can uh, with alternative sources uh, the water supply with alternative sources if we can uh, then do everything uh, with plan uh, with uh, cooperate with emergency situation emergency uh, ministry yes. mm -hmm. uh, Jan, i had forgotten something very 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 important i'm really sorry uh, in this case uh, guys uh, to uh, thank you sarkis you reminded me that uh, that i should have said about the additional support uh, in this case the military forces are also activated and um, and the military forces help both in search and rescue operations for in case uh, the, uh, the damage is severe for for instance the bridges can, can be broken or uh, destroyed or uh, or the streets can be uh, uh, totally uh, collapsed or the buildings can can have closed the streets so in these all of these cleaning activities they are also involved uh, the, let us consider in mind that we have already uh, included them according to our COP, as, SOPs, according to our contingency plans, and they are activated right at the moment of uh, receiving the note of uh, earthquake. Thank you. And one thing I just I would like to add, don't forget about the aftershock situation. So when you are planning to, I don't know, locate people in in, uh, in kindergartens or in schools or even in hotels just uh, take into consideration the uh, level of damage uh, understanding that the uh, uh, aftershock can have negative impact and uh, we, we can have additional buildings destroyed uh, uh, as a result of aftershock and okay, i wonders um uh, where can um, what's the best way for for um, the general public to prepare for these aftershocks? Will these also be communicated uh, um, through these various campaigns, or or where will this information go? That's the right question. Of course, it should be a various campaign. Again, led by by the Ministry of Emergency Situations or Municipality. Of um, I, I think the press is also wondering what's going to happen with COVID because um, when when people Luis, there are... is no COVID. <laughs> no, there was the COVID. No, no, no. We, we still have. We, just imagine this is year 2022. Of course, we don't have such high cases like there is the vaccination and other things happening, but it's not completely forgotten story. So, but anyway, the, um, the press is wondering addressing this question actually to the Ministry of Health. Um, if there is a, a strategy to make sure or to mitigate that um, COVID starts spreading now when you have the power out, outage and people might actually seek to, um, um, to, to, to I don't know, stay in uh, communal houses um, because it's cold still and yeah, if, what's the min, in, health, Ministry of Health's uh, strategy for this and how are they communicating the COVID strategy? I'm uh, sorry, if I may get yes, to, please come in. Uh, the request, I feel that more, more institution, institutions should be involved here, such as, I don't know, police and policemen with instructions, even in the streets, because if, I mean, the, I, I guess that communication channels are damaged and in case of um, panic and chaos, we need like offline, um, even uh, I mean face-to-face -face instructions to be given to citizens, and also uh, like um, other um, authorities such as um, I don't know, Ministry of Education, Social Affairs, uh, 
police and um, local government agencies from other cities um, should be hosting um, people that are, uh, I don't know, leaving city according to evacuation plan. Um, Asmik Jan, I want to add uh, that in this case, we need to cooperate with police also because you understand after this, Uh, we can have marajorstva. Um, so police must stop the crime in this mm -hmm. situation also. Guys, uh, for, for the police, uh, they are activated likewise uh, uh, everybody else in the first stage and uh, they are among the emergency management authority. Hasmik uh, Jan, it was a good question. So uh, the police... Um, patrolling uh, exists in all of the districts, uh, especially in the damaged area. They are, uh, they have uh, 24 to seven um, uh, patrolling control over there together with uh, emergency management authorities, uh, rescue service uh, participants, uh, officers. And also one important thing, uh, uh, the, uh, on, the, on the spots of the disaster, Uh, uh, each community, the heads of the community are very important and they are acting, uh, it is according to our legislation, they are acting according to these plans preliminarily agreed and created uh, and um, small uh, groups of advisory groups and uh, checking groups are created in the communities. So What we are talking is about the general governance while, the, while on the locations, it is realized through the uh, connection and uh, cooperation uh, with the um, community authorities. Uh, so it is uh, uh, already agreed by these plans and they, they are in place. So they are activated with the announcement. So on the micro level, I mean, as a citizen, I cannot go inside house because there might be aftershocks or even my building might be damaged. But um, as there is air pollution outside, I'm not advised to be outside. <laughs> What should I do now? Uh, Hasmik Jan, I want to remind that the damaged area, uh, the polluted uh, leakage air area was already isolated and these people were evacuated from their houses. And those staying in the city, they are already in the safe environment, uh, suggested to walk out only with the respiratory special uh -huh. masks. Uh, for the, as for the um, aftershocks and so on, uh, the Ministry of Emergency Situations sends out uh, regular uh, suggestions uh, through the channels of um, telecommunication to the people. Either they should right now stay outside or they are advised to go home. It, it, it happened uh, just a month ago, as I remember. Uh, they were advised to stay out for several hours. And then when yep. the aftershocks slowed down, the people were suggested to go safely home. Um, <clears throat> and of course, there are other regulations that the ministry is setting on their, uh, through their channels, providing that we don't, we, ha we have energy, uh, we have, yes, energy, Uh, so cut of energy supplies that then uh, we don't have the uh, devices, uh, the, the mobile or uh, not, not the, yes, exactly, the mobile and internet uh, connectivity, then uh, the information goes through radio connections to the officials in the, in the, in the spots and it can be disseminated uh, through uh, cell phones as well. Okay, so with this interesting discussion, let us imagine that we have, some time has passed, we are entering a new round, and this time the setting has changed. Unfortunately, we have a, a new, a new, um, let's say a new situation to deal with, which I'm trying to place well, now. John, you're torturing us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to pl place this, um, it's kind of, let me see. Okay, I can announce it, I guess, because it doesn't allow me. Yeah, it's pressed, it's placed now. So colleagues, actually, uh, there is, a, it's an opportunity. It's not a crisis anymore. Okay. So let's imagine, let's imagine that uh, Yerevan City has received a 50, 50 million euro investment opportunity, given the situation the city has been in for clean energy source or production. So renewable energy uh, sector development. 
and um, I'd invite colleagues uh, for a discussion. It's, it's the Yerevan municipality as the city authority receiving the um, allocation, but of course it goes uh, into you know, decision-making with the energy sector and others in terms of how this should be distributed and what are the key infrastructures or the key uh, directions, I don't know, for example, the health, that will actually be important to include as a recipient of this renewable energy source to ensure that in future crises, they are more resilient. So um, it's first of all, maybe up to you, to the Yerevan municipality, if you have anything to add, and then all other actors, of course, you're invited to place a what if card in terms of what to do with this 50 million, uh, 50 million euro investment in renewable energy. Uh, thank you for 50 million. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first of all, we need to understand needs, uh, then uh, make the project what we can do, uh, under, uh, understand the feasibility of the implementation of uh, solar panels and other uh, uh, alternative energy source with um, energy company. Yeah, so you have an energy company here. Maybe you can imagine, let's imagine for this scenario that you know the, the needs. You already, you know, you can say, for example, you have discovered what are the needs. And also be, be from the previous two situations, the earthquake, the power outage, you know, it's been one year after the earthquake, you already know the situation and this power outage, what were the sectors that were mostly uh, damaged and hit. And now with all this information, um, you are to make a decision in terms of where to invest. But again, colleagues, and also for the energy company, uh, this is a new opportunity, which is kind of in competition with your traditional way of doing, but maybe you are also switching to solar after all these uh, you know, events or, or other type of uh, renewable energy resource. And other colleagues like in health ministry or, or, or others can also you know, make some requests in terms of you know, how they see this uh, investment to be used. So please let's let's be active in terms of how we want to use this. The press is encouraging the government to make the decision or to, to encouraging the municipality to make the decision process uh, transparent um, and just to make sure that uh, as many people as possible is part of making this decision since we're all citizens and we all enjoy the city and we should also have a say on how money is invested. That's a, the, the press. Okay, uh, all process will be very transparent, I promise. Uh, uh, dear, <laughs> dear, municipality, dear Emer, uh, energy uh, company, uh, I have said, set a what if for uh, both of you. Uh, what if, uh, if solar panels are set on the buildings? It is just a short version of what I wanted to explain. Of course, we all understand what it means. And then for Yerevan municipality, I have suggested that urban development de uh, department of the Yerevan Munif uh, municipality or something like that can provide the plans of relevant buildings for renewable energy panels, uh, devices, and so on. I think uh, this is a uh, urban development issue uh, in terms of that... Um, uh, that possibility. I agree with you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Also, as a citizen, because we have witnessed the crisis, uh, I think we are now more prepared mentally for co-financing whatever um, um, uh, alternative um, energy uh, sources to be placed. For instance, there are lots of modalities that. Uh, require citizens participation also. So I think that um, the urban municipality that receives the funding can use citizens to bring even more funding to the project. That's, that's a great suggestion, Nasmik, uh, dear civilian, I mean citizen. <laughs> um, that's really amazing. And dear you... annoying citizen. <laughs> <laughs> no, dear active citizen, do you have a suggestion in terms of what sector exactly do you think this uh, renewable energy should serve? Um, as a citizen? Yeah, I mean, given the previous crisis that you see a lot of sectors were down, like the health, the social, etc. Do you have any... I, I, I would, um, I would um, suggest that it, it might, um, should be used for serving um, 
for ensuring public services. I mean, public services in, term, in terms of electricity in um, the houses, in buildings, because I'm a young parent and I want my child to have these uh, normal conditions to live in. Um, if, if I may suggest on this, of course, the uh, most critical services should be supplied with uh, at the first stage. They should be prioritized. And first of all, these are hospitals, educational institutions, um, and uh, the centers for social assistance and so far. I think they, they are priority, first of all, at first hand. They are priorities, but as a young parent, I would insist my interests first. Uh, colleagues, after 50 million investment in energy sector, I think energy cost in Yerevan will become a zero. So <laughs> only, <laughs> only energy company will not be happy. <laughs> so dear energy company, uh, unfortunately, Vahan has lost connection to the board. He cannot place it, but please speak up because this is a very important round for you. Um, what, is your, what are your thoughts? Vahan, you can hear us, right? You are in the chat, uh, sorry, in the Zoom. Let me see. Oh, no, he's not. Okay. But energy company can reprofile and be the first partner in this, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Let me just quickly, he, because he was connected. I think he lost it for a moment. So no worries. He will reconnect and we can uptake this discussion. But um, health ministry, do you have any suggestion for this? Do you want you know, to ensure that, for example, hospitals are insured with renewable energy so you don't you are more resilient in turn to the future shocks uh, telecom company anyone colleagues do you, i don't i don't see what if cards but maybe you want to you are yes, developing I have, them. Said. I have put a what if card uh, concerning i'm asking UNDMT to provide an uh, expertise in terms of human resources because uh, like having this great opportunity we want to partially shift to this re renewable energy and so we're asking from the expertise and ready to invest to partially shift, uh, taking into account the current drawbacks in the current energy system. Okay. Um, may I also suggest something? Here is a wonderful opportunity to cooperate with the private sector uh, for building companies and so far. The government can announce a campaign of, um, uh, of uh, new projects uh, suggesting best. Uh, uh, it, it, here we apply the Build Back Better um, uh, approach that after uh, both the, uh, the earthquake, we need a rebuilding of the city. And then we have this wonderful opportunity of big investment in renewable energy. Then we have this opportunity of build back better. So uh, uh, inviting uh, uh, the competitions of building companies to, uh, to suggest best ways of uh, more secure buildings, and then the urban development uh, department may choose among them which are stronger, which projects are uh, more sustainable, how uh, durable, how long they will uh, exist, and as I mentioned, also prioritizing uh, creation of institutions for the um, uh, social services, uh, healthcare, education, and so on. So uh, I think this is a good opportunity for building back better and for a good recovery and sustainable development. Armin, what would you say on this? <laughs> um, no, I, I fully agree. And, uh, and actually, uh, of course, we can provide the relevant expertise as well. But I think we can also engage the, the Armenian companies, the private sector, uh, in, in providing their expertise as well, because uh, for this purpose, we don't need uh, special international expertise. We have enough capacity in, in Armenia. I think it is a good opportunity to think also just not within this exercise, but uh, maybe for you to just fix this as an idea. We need to work uh, with the private sector, with private companies to understand their capacity and to, hand, uh, to have also uh, signed agreements or, or memorandum of understanding of some, some legislative document to engage them during the emergencies for, the, for their expertise, for their immediate response, et cetera, et cetera. But of course, UNDP, DMT stand ready to support with this expertise and also suggest to engage the local capacity we have in the country. 
from yeah, private sector. I mentioned also including the private sector, Armenjan. This is very important for the development of the country to use the local sources, local skills and uh, uh, people, uh, first of all, also to provide them with working uh, spots uh, to decrease the number of uh, unemployment. So there are many benefits in this uh, one big decision. Thank you. Can I ask the health ministry, Tigran, are you with us? Uh, because uh, energy company is not yet connected. Do you have... Um... Do you have a suggestion? Do you have a, a what if card to place before we proceed to the next stage? Tigran, can you hear me? Okay, in the meantime, the press comes in and um, with the key message. Um, it seems like everyone is super excited about greening the energy sector and all the opportunities that it brings. But the fact is that Armenia has a long relationship, for example, with Russia uh, in terms of imports of, of gas. And this green revolution can, of course, create tension in, in the region more widely. Are policymakers and the municipality ignoring this? Are we prepared for this transition? And what will it mean for our, with our, for our relationship with our neighbors? Uh, I want to answer Louise's question. Uh, Louise Jan, very interesting question, very important one. Of course, these kind of decisions, they, they should be political, uh, politically well thought and well reflected decisions. But at the same time, as we mentioned already, uh, as I at least uh, suggested that uh, these um, changes uh, concern the critical infrastructures and so far, uh, we cannot totally shift and immediately shift to uh, renewable energy 100% uh, uh, and it means that we cannot cut all of the connections of gas, gas supplies or we cannot totally reject and none of the, I think, none of the uh, even developed countries, uh, uh, they are still ready to that to do that. They cannot totally make that shift, but this is in case of emergencies this renewable energy will be really important. So these reflections will exist, of course, among the politicians and uh, political dis the discussions, and they will be uh, the basis uh, for major decisions. But of course, we cannot, uh, on the other hand, we cannot um, neglect the possibilities and we cannot uh, stop looking forward. This is the time of changing the world and we are in reality out, even out of this game, we are facing total changes in many things and many aspects. So maybe Hebride uh, possibilities and solutions are possible, uh, at least starting to do those interesting shifts, looking forward for the good, I don't know. The press is happy with the response. <laughs> Thank you so much. We have such a very kind press. You're yes. not <laughs> with all sheet. <laughs> Thank you. So now, colleagues, uh, but this is great. We're entering the second phase, like phase B, where we can actually negotiate on the what ifs. So uh, I'm, I'm assuming no more new what ifs will be placed. Uh, unfortunately, we lost our energy company uh, on the very most on the most interesting place, but. Um, uh, we proceed with the next what ifs, if, if, unless you want to add something more uh, from other participants. Are you okay to proceed? Yes. Okay. So uh, the next stage is to actually negotiate around the what ifs. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, the telecom company says they are ready to shift to renewable energy completely. So, uh, dear municipality, what do you think about this? Are you ready to, you know, in including your project, the telecom company, to share, so to speak, the, the resources between this uh, and, and other priorities? What is your take on this? Yes, yes, of course. 50 million is too much. We can share everything. 
It's not too much. Come on. <laughs> um, only one thing: uh, the alternative energies uh, like solar panels. It's not stable. So in summertime, we can make uh, too much energy, but in uh, wintertime, not so. So we must to cooperate with energy company. Uh, mm -hmm. That's it. But what would be the solution? You want to use other renewable resources of energy or you want to actually store them and be able to use them? Because you... You will uh, have a lot of energy. We must cooperate with them. We must cooperate with them. Give them uh, energy, then get back. For have a stable energy. Mm -hmm. Great. I mean, on behalf of the energy company, <laughs> I think that they would be you know, happy to cooperate, I can say. And the telecom company, do you want to react to this, to the municipality? Yeah. Very yeah. gentle agreement. I'm very much thankful that they have decided to share with us and we can help uh, with everything we can in municipalities, operations, in shifting into like renewable energy. Also in this case, not only solar panels, but wind energy, I think, can be utilized in Yerevan. Yes. What do you think? Uh, yes, yes, uh, I think not only solar panel we can add, we can make an uh, energy with other source of also uh, wind energy source uh, and maybe other also have. Yeah, thank you for the cooperation. Mm -hmm. Thank the you. Continuing Luis's um, point that um, there might, uh, um, that we are, receiving guests, for instance, from Russia and everything. And also considering the point that uh, public institutions would be priority for having installed these alternative energy sources. Um, can we assume that, for instance, prices for electricity would go high, would be raised, and then regular citizens would be not very happy with this investment? I don't think in this way. I think uh, we we can have a priority where to implement first uh, panels. Uh, this is the uh, very uh, important buildings uh, like hospitals, government buildings, uh, kindergartens, etc. Then we can implement it in uh, residential buildings. Yeah, but as, as a, like a political development to this uh, supplier country, in this case, Russia can um, change rates. So uh, I don't think so, because gas, this is other type of energy. This is not electricity. So gas also needs, uh, I don't think they can change the price of gas. Okay, and Yerevan only one city. This is not all Armenia. Okay, so then, like the re relevant communication thing should be carried out, so that it's not that Armenia is shifting to alternative energy, but it's just, for instance, um, aid uh, to this crisis situation. Um, colleagues, I'm glad to say that our energy company is back into the conversation. Banja, welcome back. So um, just to very quickly tell you that, you know, there's been a lot of discussion around this 50 million opportunity. And we were discussing in terms of, you know, what would be your um, kind of, uh, do you see it as a competition? Do you see it as an opportunity for you? Uh, because, for example, the telecom company is ready to shift completely to renewable sources. And I think they have an agreement with the municipality already. So what would be your, your stake here? Before we close the game, maybe it would be important to also hear from you. I hope you can hear us now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm here now, sorry for the absence. It was network connectivity issues. So uh, I think as far as uh, competition or uh, aid is concerned, it depends on the type of energy interests that are being represented. So if it's the renewable energy interests, such as the solar solar energy companies, I think they would be receptive towards new investments. However, if it's conventional uh, energy companies, such as Gazprom, which is the main provider in Armenia, 
uh, they would most likely see this as a as a, as a more competitive move. Uh, I think I think in general, fifty million a fifty million dollar injection will not be sufficient to to uh, implement any long term uh, transition towards you know, renewable energy or non conventional energy resources. But uh, for the purposes of preventing the crisis from spreading or essentially managing the contagion of the crisis. Uh, I, I think I think the energy companies and especially the renewable energy companies will be well placed to uh, to move flexibly. So Gazprom it has a more fixed uh, the, the 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 supply chain for Gazprom is more fixed and uh, less flexible than one would be for solar panels since they're more portable and they're more uh, useful in crisis situations. Thank you. Any other feedback? No. Okay. Uh, and uh, I don't see. So this is all. <laughs> all the suggestions are endorsed by the by the press and the young parent. So everyone is happy with this uh, new investment opportunity. It's just interesting that the municipality thinks it's a uh, it's a uh, kind of it's it's more than enough. But the energy company says it's not even enough to to make long term investment. But anyways, colleagues, let me you know thank you all for for really active participation and serious role play. This has been really very interesting to follow. Uh, I hope you also enjoyed it, um, the conversation. I will stop the game here. I mean, it's almost 7 p.m. We've been three hours into this uh, simulation. So um, stopping it now uh, for, uh, for you know, the play, but uh, let's, let's stay, of course, to share a bit of reflections. Um, again, thank you so much for really your dedication and like being in the game and uh, playing the scenario and the roles. Um, so I would I would just like to uh, to invite everyone you know to share a bit of reflections. Maybe you can put on your cameras if you want if you have good connection. Uh, thank you, thank you, Vangelis. Thank you, Dr. Shah. We'll wait for you to come back. <laughs> thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm I really want to thank you also, colleagues, especially that you know despite the connectivity issues we faced, uh, we kind of uh, we we didn't lose the the spirit. So we were still connected to the game and we could carry on the conversation. So um, I don't know, I mean, I've been, uh, I, I, if anyone, I don't want to make this really for the beginning, at least very structured. Can you quickly share any, you know, first reactions and then we can take this forward. Uh, okay, yes, John. please. John. Have a hand? And okay. If I may, just for yeah. your information, during this kind of emergencies, we need to continue our work for 24 hours. So. It is not the time to stop the process. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just want to say that uh, it was really very uh, excellent work. And I would like to congratulate Dr. Vigjan, first of all, you and Nelly for the valuable work you have done. And also all the colleagues, and especially Luis, who was, as a press person, very active. Yeah, I like it very much. Yeah, and Armin and Sarkis, for your time, for your efforts. Thank you very much, colleagues. It was really a very nice exercise. I think this is a good opportunity for us to, again, revisit the action plans, whatever we have as a disaster.